I'm sorry to say, but Terraria has been getting away with a lot in the past 10 years. It's developed an almost cult-like following among fans, praising it as some type of masterpiece. In my opinion, it's time to take off those rose-tinted glasses and see Terraria for what it really is. In other words, why I think it's complete garbage and why it'll stay that way because no one plays it anymore. Since why Minecraft is not a fun game. Terraria is one of the worst games I've ever played. And me, I've played Ice League. Today I want to settle the age-old debate. Which game is better, Terraria or Minecraft? And while this may sound like a very simple question, the answer is much, much deeper. At a surface level, these games could be picked apart to no end. And while this video will still have those parts, I want to discuss what each game means to me. And I want to clarify that I love both of these games and will continue to love them in the future. But today, I want to try to take an objective critique of both Terraria and Minecraft. But I also want to add some subjective experiences and takes. Without further ado, let's begin. First up is Terraria, and while both games don't really have a story or a plot because they're survival games, I want to discuss what little there is if any, and how deep the lore may be. So starting with Terraria, your goal is slightly unclear as you spawn. Once again, I don't expect much being that it is a survival game. But one thing is certain, let's beat some bosses baby! As you play, you may find bosses that inhabit the world of Terraria, some easy, some more difficult than ever, but the expanded universe gives a lot of insight into the world of Terraria and the deep lore that runs through the game's veins. And while theorists could give you a factual explanation of why you're doing what you're doing, personally I have my own version, and here it is. The player is pure of heart and wants to vanquish evil. It makes sense because when you talk to the Dryad NPC and check the status of the world, the player knows how much of their realm is corrupted. There's even an achievement for cleansing the entire world of evil, and the player's adventure brings them to defeat all the evil evil bosses and clear the world of all its evil. Let's talk about Minecraft. Once again, your goal is unclear when you spawn, not expecting too much because of the survival genre. Minecraft's story is way more up to the player and what kinds of experiences they might come across while playing the game. Mojang doesn't dive too much into the lore because they reiterate that it doesn't really matter, because each world is different. As the player decides to handle problems and create solutions, the story is created. And while you could certainly say the same about Terraria, in Minecraft, the game gives you a lot more freedom by nature. So who takes the cake? In my opinion, Terraria takes the point this round. The lore is more appealing to me as a person and I like the visual art style, but I would still like to acknowledge how Minecraft gives you the freedom and creation of storytelling. When I talk about progression, I want to focus on the gameplay aspect of how the players progress through items and gear, as well as bosses. This could be very similar to the story in certain aspects which is why the gameplay adds much needed details. Let's start with Minecraft this time. Minecraft's progression is fairly short, as a lot of it can be skipped with the use of seeds. Just look at the speedrunning community. Right after spawning, the player completes their first task, hitting a tree, beginning Minecraft's progression. While basically every single armor and weapon are objectively optional to beat this game, let's go with the most widely accepted way to play. Starting with a wooden or stone tools, the player has a choice to either begin building a base or go gathering resources to make iron as well as get a few diamonds. Once the player has chosen either of those steps, they will usually complete the other next. Then they'll focus their attention on diamonds and or going to the nether. There, the player must kill Blazes and Endermen to make Eyes of Ender in order to find the Stronghold. Once the players use the Eye of Ender, and once they've also reached the Stronghold, the player must enter the End Dimension and slay the Dragon, finishing the overall game progression. Some notable points to add are Villagers for Enchants and Netherite Mining, however to me these aren't considered necessary progression steps in order to beat the game. Terraria's progression is much longer. Speedrunners are still able to beat the game fast, no doubt, but it takes the average player anywhere from 20 to 35 hours just to beat the progression intended by the developers. Increasing the difficulty will make beating the game even longer, whereas with Minecraft you don't really get that extra time, sort of just momentary challenge and less long term difficulty. Just like Minecraft you begin by smacking a tree, but unlike Minecraft you start with copper tools. 
Then the player dives into the caves to gather resources, accessories, and more, finding the casual life crystal along the way, increasing the player's health. Once the player is ready, they'll go on to fight the Eye of Cthulhu, then the Brain or the Worm. This usually results in the player unlocking their world's evil armor set, Crimson or Corruption, and optionally finding a meteor. The player can either fight Skeletron, which I usually do, or go straight to the Wall of Flesh. Once the Wall of Flesh is beaded, the world is plunged into hard mode, and now more enemy types have awoken. The player must become stronger now that most mobs will surely kill you. You usually will break Crimson Altars or Corruption Altars to enable hard mode ores to spawn, allowing the player to reach Titanium slash Adamantite. Once this is done, the player needs to beat the mechanical bosses so the plantera bulb can spawn. After the mechanical bosses have been slain, the player must challenge the plant from the depths, and beating plantera will grant access to the jungle dungeon. There, Gollum is found, and yet once again must be defeated. After this, the player must fight the lunatic cultists, thus spawning the pillars, resulting in the Moon Lord's creation. Once the final boss is beaten, the base game progression is over. In my personal opinion, Terraria has a more thought out game progression, and there's so many things I didn't even mention like events and optional boss fights. Although Minecraft's progression is fairly simple, it isn't that deep, rather opting to give the player more control over what they want to do. Terraria gains a second point. Minecraft's creativity is unlike any other game in the survival genre. And I honestly don't have much to say for this section, I think it goes without saying. Being that Minecraft is played in three dimensions, the player has a whole other access to let the player's mind run wild. And while I have no doubt the player can make great creations in Terraria with it being in 2D, but to the average player it's a big learning curve to try and only build in two dimensions. Minecraft doesn't restrict the player in the same ways that Terraria does in this aspect. However, I will say this. Building in 2D allows the player to seize all sides of their build, unlike 3D, which forces you to take a step back and look at your build. Besides that, Minecraft takes his point, and both games offer a wide variety of blocks and other items to build with, so nothing is really limited here on both sides. When I talk about freedom, I'm directly referring to how much the player is able to do without any restrictions. This is important because as a survival game, you should be able to express yourself and make things that you want to make, ensuring that the gameplay formula doesn't hold the player back in any sort of way. Minecraft allows the player to build and create whatever they want, wherever they want, allowing the player to build on top of land, high up in the sky, or even deep underground. There are no gameplay mechanics that restrict this. However, you can't say the same about Terraria. The biggest reason why I think this is, is because of the spreading of evil biomes such as the Crimson, Corruption, and Hollow. Whenever I make a new world, I can never truly build in peace because I have this looming feeling that my base will be overrun by these biomes, resulting in me losing all my NPCs and builds. I understand that the way people get around the spreading is to build trenches, and believe me, I've made hundreds and hundreds of these time and time again. But the fact that you even have to do that shows how much you're limited to in terms of freedom. Especially early game. When you enter hard mode, it gets even worse. Now the biomes are spreading even faster. Usually you would try to get a contaminator to halt the spreading, but without the DCU or drill containment unit, it does little to nothing. Once the player either completely removes the evil biomes and or contains them properly, that's when you truly have freedom. I would like to see a toggle at the world screen which tells me I can disable or enable the spreading of evil biomes. I think that would fix a lot of my problems to be honest. Nonetheless, Minecraft takes the point for this round, let's move on. Content. Probably the most important thing in a game, because without it, you have something like COD Ghosts. New dog model. But what do I mean by content? Quite literally items and anything the player can get their hands on. No matter how many playthroughs I have, Terraria seemingly has endless items and accessories that I always seem to find. So many different gadgets and weaponry to play with. The possibilities are endless. Trust me when I say Minecraft has good content because it truly does. However, I feel like I'm always playing with the same items. It's like having a box of Legos. For a while, those Legos will seem new and interesting. But then you start to realize that there's only so many things you can make with 100 pieces. And while this logic can definitely be aimed at Terraria as well, it feels as if those Legos in the box get swapped out every time you open it. The pixel art is so detailed and amazing, I never found myself calling any armor set ugly or unimaginative. The game has so many cool items, it would take me a lifetime to list them all. Terraria devs don't seem to be shy of adding any items, unlike Minecraft. Remember when they answered why they couldn't add sharks? 
I could have gone on for hours and hours comparing these two games. Unfortunately, I have a life. But now it's time for the big reveal. Terraria wins. Good job, Terraria. And thank you to Minecraft as well. This video literally couldn't have been made with you two, so great job again. I want to emphasize that in no way does this mean Minecraft is bad because I love both of these games. I just thought it would be fun to do a little comparison. If you guys have any thoughts or opinions, please share them down below. I read every comment. And as always, thank you for watching. Subscribe and like if you don't forget to do that, please do it. Alright, peace.